In this video, we will be calculating value at risk or VAR using the parametric method, and we will do it in such a way that you can calculate it using any time period, confidence interval, and with free stock prices straight from Yahoo Finance. I'm going to be using VS Code, but you can use Jupyter Notebooks as well. Now let's get started. In order to calculate value at risk in Python, we're going to have to import the necessary libraries. I'm using six of them in this example, all listed here. If you don't have any of these or one of them uh, installed on your computer, you're going to have to go into the command prompt and type pip install the library name that is PIP install. And then, for example, you would put NumPy. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we've got all six of our necessary libraries imported. Now what we're going to be doing here is setting a time range for a certain number of years to help us in our analysis. We're going to be pulling data from Yahoo Finance on stocks for that period of time. Just to start off with, I'm going to start with uh, 15 years. So we'll set a variable called uh, years equal to 15. And then we're going to have to declare an end date based on today. And I can use that date time library that we declared up here as DT. Um, date time as DT right here. And then we'll call a function from that library date time dot now, which gives us today's date. And then we want to create a start date that's based on um, 15 years earlier. So we'll use end date and then we'll use another date time function. So we'll subtract um, DT dot time delta, which gives us a certain number of days. And so we'll set days equal to 365 days in a year multiplied by the number of years that we declared above. And let's run that. So we'll now have a date of today here and a date 15 years ago here. Let's create a list of tickers and we'll just call it tickers. And I'm going to start off with five as an example. And we got to use the square brackets to create that list. The first one, let's use SPY, which is the uh, largest S&P 500 ETF. Then next we'll use BND, which is the largest bond market ETF. Next we'll use GLD, which is the largest commodity based ETF, which tracks the price of gold. And then we'll use QQQ, which is the largest NASDAQ ETF. And then VTI, which is Vanguard's uh, all world stock index. And let's run that. Okay, perfect. So now for each of these tickers, what we're going to do is download the daily adjusted close prices for all of them. And the reason we're using adjusted close prices rather than the normal close prices is because adjusted close prices count for dividends and stock splits. And our analysis will be more accurate if we incorporate those. So what we're going to be doing first is just creating an empty data frame called adjusted close DF. And we're going to set it equal to the pandas, so PD dot data frame. So we're declaring this data frame, but we haven't put anything in it yet. Now we're going to create a for loop to go through this whole list of each of these tickers. And we're going to grab the adjusted close prices for um, each date for all the tickers in that range. <music> So here's our for loop for each ticker in tickers. We're going to get the data from Yahoo Finance and we're going to download that data based on that ticker symbol and then the start date and the end date that we declared above. And then once we have all the data, we're just going to parse out the adjusted close value because that's all we need. Let's just print out um, the adjusted close DF just so that you guys can see for yourselves what it looks like. And let's run that. It should take a couple seconds because it's a bit of data to download. Okay, so we downloaded all five. And now starting from here is the data frame. So we just have each date for the last 15 years. And we've got the adjusted close price for every single one of these five ETFs for each date. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the daily log returns and we're going to drop any NAs. So what I mean by daily log returns is if you think of a simple return, it would just be taking one day's price and divide it by the previous day's price and subtract one. That would give you the percentage change. But then if you take the log of that, it actually makes our lives easier on later on in the calculation because um, the log returns are additive. And if we do it on an annualized basis, log returns are um, easier to work with. So let's get the log returns and we'll put them in a variable called log returns and we'll set it equal to numpy or np.log. 
and then we're going to take adjusted close df and we're going to divide it by adjusted close df dot shift one and so what this shift one is doing is it's basically saying like let's say for example on this date the uh, april 29th of 2008 if we wanted to find the uh change in price or the percentage return we take this value we'll shift up one row so we'll divide by the row shifted up one above it right and then we're taking the log of that so that gives us our daily returns and what we need to do now is actually drop any na's so drop any na values and the reason we do that is because the first row wouldn't actually have anything to divide by so we need to get rid of any possible NAs because it can screw up the analysis later on. And then I'll also just go ahead and print this uh, log returns data frame so that you guys can see uh, what it looks like. So let's print that. And so we can see that for every single day for the entire time range, we have the percentage change in each of these ETFs price. And now that we've got our daily returns, we're actually surprisingly close to finished. So what we're going to do now is create an equally weighted portfolio. And what I mean by that is we're going to take each of our portfolio securities and put an equal amount of money into each one. So in this case, we'll put 20% into five securities. And so we'll say portfolio value is equal to, and in this example, let's just say our portfolio is worth a million dollars. Let's let's say we're pretty we're pretty rich. Then we'll set weights equal to. So we've set weights equal to, and um, it's going to be a NumPy array where we're just setting each value equal to one divided the length of tickers. And if you remember tickers, which we declared up here, is just five different uh, securities. So the length will be five. So each one will be 20%. So there we go. We have an uh, array with five different values of 20% each. And now we're going to calculate the historical portfolio returns based on an equally weighted portfolio with the daily returns of these values that we calculated here. Okay, so to calculate the historical returns, we need to create a new variable and we'll just call that historical returns and we'll set it equal to log returns multiplied by the weights. So we're basically just doing a weighted average of each security's log returns and the weight within that security. And then we're going to sum all of those. So just think of it as a uh, weighted average across the five securities. And then let's just print that out so I can show you guys what it actually looks like. So for each day, our portfolio had this uh, return, essentially, for the entire time range. And now that we have that information, we can do some stuff with it. Value at risk is always based on two things. One, you need to choose a confidence interval, and we'll do that below. Two, you need a time period to base your analysis on. Now, we're going to do this based on a five-day period in this example. So let's set days equal to five. And then let's create a data frame based on five-day rolling returns. So let's just call this historical X day returns. And then let's set that equal to historical returns. And we're going to use the function rolling. And we'll set window equal to days and then let's just sum all that so basically what we're going to be doing is going for each day in this entire data frame uh historical returns that we created right above and then let's say for example on 7 31 of 2008 we're just going to get the value of the five preceding days so we'd sum up all these values and that would have been the five day rolling return leading up to this date and then we just do that for every single day in the whole portfolio. Now let's run that. Okay, so we're going to need to calculate our portfolio standard deviation. But in order to do so, we need to create a covariance matrix for all the securities in the portfolio. And so to do that, it's quite simple. It's just one simple line. We'll say cove matrix. So that's going to be our covariance matrix. And then we'll say log returns. So log returns was the data frame that held all of our log normal returns for each day for all our securities. And then we're just going to do .cove. It's nice inbuilt Python function. 
And then this gives us a daily covariance matrix. So let's annualize it by multiplying by 252 because there's 252 trading days in a year. And let's run that. Perfect. Now that we have that, we can calculate our portfolio standard deviation. This is also quite easy with just one line of code. It will be a little convoluted. I will warn you that. So let's do np.square root. And so within this square root bracket, there's three things we're going to put. We're going to put weights dot t. So when you do dot t, this just transposes a matrix. So we're basically going to be multiplying three matrices together. We can use the at symbol, this ampersand here, to multiply matrices with one another. So we'll do cove matrix. And then we will multiply it again by weights. So basically we're taking weights here, which was that array of like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. 0 .2 then we're transposing it like that. And then we're going to multiply it with the covariance matrix that we made right up above. And then we're gonna multiply again by weights without it being transposed. And that is actually how you calculate a uh, portfolio variance. So that right there is variance. And then to get portfolio standard deviation, you have to take the square root of variance. So there we go, let's run that. And then let's set some different confidence levels to visualize. And so I'm gonna create a list. I'm gonna create a list, I'm gonna call it confidence levels. Let's put them in brackets. So every statistics course I've taken and these like portfolio management courses, I think the most common ones that I see people use for confidence levels are like 90%, uh, 95%, and 99%. So let's just let's just go with that. So let's create this list. And then down here, we're going to calculate VAR at each of these different confidence levels with a for loop. So what I did here was I imported another library that I forgot to up above at the start of this video. So just go ahead and import this, uh, this norm function from the scipy.stats library. And then I'm creating an empty list. And this is where we're gonna store our different values at risk. And then in this here, we're creating a for loop. So for CL in confidence levels, so these are different confidence intervals. We're gonna do this. We're gonna calculate VAR and VAR is gonna be equal to the portfolio value that we set up above, multiplied by the portfolio standard deviation that we calculated here, multiplied by so this function norm.ppf and then we put the confidence level in it so for example for this one 90 percent this would just give us the z score for a 90th percentile so this is just to give us the z score and that's how you calculate var and then we'll multiply by the square root of the days divided by 252 because that's how we're going to um annualize that value so let's uh run that Perfect. And now let's print out the VAR results. So I didn't want to make you guys watch me write this here. So I went ahead and wrote everything out in advance. And so basically we're just going to print out for each confidence level the amount, which is here we go. So at the 90th percent confidence interval level, uh, we have a VAR of 24,000. At the 95th percentile confidence level, we have a VAR of 30,000, etc. And you can see as we go further out into the tail or further out into that distribution, the VAR gets higher and higher and higher. And I'll show you on a graph down here again. I, I wrote this out in advance because I didn't want you guys to watch me type that. But like you can see here, so once we get further out into the tail, um, that's where we're looking at that 99th percentile confidence interval. The 95th percentile, we get a little bit closer, et cetera. And so you can see these, this blue distribution is all our rolling five-day returns for the entire time frame. And so then we can get our VAR further down in the tail by increasing our confidence level. And we could also expand this VAR and increase it if, for example, we go up here. And let's say we change days to 20. You'll see our VARs are actually no longer going to be like 24K, 30K, 43K. I'm going to run all again, and you'll see these will actually increase quite a bit probably. Yeah, so now we're at 48K, 61K, 87K. You can see this distribution is just going further out into larger values when you increase the time period. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you.